The second part of Lesson 2.1 continues with linear functions. We'll look at parallel and perpendicular lines, and then we'll finish with some application. Lines that are parallel have the same slope. And lines that are perpendicular have slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other. So we flip the slope of 1 and change its sign to make it perpendicular. Down below it says determine if the pair of lines is parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So we'll do a lot with slope formula here. That's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we'll compare them and define them as either per parallel, perpendicular, or neither. In our first example, line 1, what I'm going to do is just identify my x1, y1, and x2, y2, and find the slope. If I do y2 minus y1, that's negative 4 minus negative 1. Oops, I forgot the negative in there. Hang on. Here we go. Minus negative 1 divided by x2 minus x1, 6 minus 3. In the numerator, we have that double negative. It changes to positive. Negative 4 plus 1 would equal negative 3. In the denominator, 6 minus 3 is positive 3, and that reduces to negative 1. That's the slope of line 1. Let's take a look at line 2. And we'll just do the same thing. x1, whoops, there, 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 go, there it goes. x1, y1, and x2, y2. And again, we're just defining slope. In this case, we have y2 minus y1, which is 7 minus 5. Over x2 minus x1, negative 2 minus negative 4. We have that double negative. 7 minus 5 is 2, negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2, and that's a slope of 1. So now take a look at what we have. We have a slope of negative 1 and a slope of positive 1. Now 1 is a reciprocal of itself, and they're opposite signs, so one's the negative sign of the other. What that means is that these two lines are perpendicular. And we've proven that by finding their slopes. Now it's your turn. Pause the video and find the slope for line one and then line two. And then press play and see if you found them to be parallel, perpendicular, or neither. For both lines one and two, I got a slope of positive one third. Those are the same slope and that would mean these lines are parallel. And we found that answer by calculating their slope. Another useful way to incorporate slope into parallel and perpendicular slopes into your uh, process is finding slope intercept form for an equation that passes through a specific point and that's either parallel or per perpendicular to a given line. Let's first start with parallel. If we want to write the equation of a line that's parallel to our given line, Let's first determine the slope of that line. If we have 2x minus 3y equals 5, that's in general form. So you can do one of two things. You could solve for y and then put it in slope intercept form to determine the original slope. Or if you remember from day one, our formula for slope in general form is negative a over b. And in this case, that would be negative 2 over negative 3, that's a b right there, there we go, and that would make that positive 2 thirds. That's the slope for our original line. If we want a parallel slope, we would keep that fraction the exact same. And that's our m value. Recognizing the point we want to go through, that 2, negative 1, is our x1 and our y1. This brings us to point slope form from our day one video. To create our equation, if we substitute what we know into this template, we'll simplify. 
we have y minus y1, which is negative 1. Our slope is 2 thirds, x minus x1, which is 2. From here, we simplify. Remember, if you have a double negative, change that to positive. On the right-hand side, eliminate the parentheses simply by distributing the 2 thirds in. This gives us y plus 1 equals 2 thirds times x is 2 thirds x minus 2 thirds times 2, multiply the top, multiply the bottoms, would be minus 4 thirds. To get y by itself, we'll move 1 over by subtracting. And we need to make that a common denominator with the negative 4 thirds. And that would be negative 3 thirds. The 1's cancel. We have y equals 2 thirds x minus, if we have 4 thirds minus 3 thirds, that gives us minus 7 thirds. And that's the equation of a line that's parallel to our original line going through the point 2, negative 1. The next part would be finding the equation of a line that's perpendicular. If we want an equation that's perpendicular, we already know the original slope, so that's kind of nice. If the original slope was 2 thirds, to make it perpendicular, we'll take its reciprocal and make it negative. So we're going to change the sign, negative and then 3 over 2. And that's all we need to do for our slope. Everything else, as far as process, stays the same. We're going to plug in what we know into y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Again, we'll have y minus negative 1 equals m, which is now negative 3 halves, times x minus 2. From here, everything stays the same. Let's make our double negative positive, but now we'll distribute negative 3 halves in. This gives us y plus 1 on the left, negative 3 halves times x, and now watch what happens, everybody, when we take negative 3 halves times negative 2. If I put negative 2 over 1, the two negatives will cancel out when you distribute and give us plus 3 times 2 is 6 over 2 times 1, which would be 3. And if we subtract 1 to get y by itself, we get y equals negative 3 halves x plus 2. And this equation is now perpendicular to the original, but going through the same point. When we look at linear functions with real life applications, we've got some steps to follow. Always make sure to read the problem carefully, underlining key features as needed. Determine your variables. What's your input and what is your output? What should x be and what should y equal? Find at least two ordered pairs, and once you know that, we'll use our point-slope form rule to write our linear function. Now when we determine our variables, the key things to think about, x is typically a time function, and y can be pretty much whatever else. You could re represent cost, you could represent population, lots of different types of outputs are possible, but x is going to be pretty consistent with time. And as we create our two ordered pairs, we should have our x1 and our y1. That's a 1. There we go. And our x2 and y2. That'll help us create slope and then use our point slope form. Let's try that. It says the sales for Under Armour were approximately $25.3 billion in 2013 and $27.8 billion in 2014. Using only this information, write a linear equation that gives the sales in terms of the year. So given the sales in terms of the year, sales would be the y, the year would be the x. Then predict the sales for this year. So as we look at all that information, we've got $25 billion in 2013. Now it says the year should be our x, so that would be our x1. 
the sales would be our Y1. And then in 2014, that's another year, we'll make that another coordinate. The sales increased to 27.8 billion. That would be our Y2. Let's write those out as ordered pairs. X1, Y1, 2013, comma, 25.3. And X2, Y2, 2014, 27.8. We're asked to write a linear function that gives sales in terms of the year. The first thing that we should do is calculate the slope. If this is linear, what's the change for each year? Recognizing we have our x1 and our y1, our x2 and y2, our slope formula should be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now this works out pretty nice for us since the denominator equals 1 if we take 2014 minus 2013. In the numerator we have 27.8 minus 25.3 and that's 2.5. So 2.5 divided by 1 is just 2.5. That's our slope. Now let's go ahead and plug that into y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And we'll use our information for x1 and y1 as 2013 and 25.3. Therefore, y minus y1 would be y minus 25.3 equals m, which is 2.5, times x minus x1, which is 2013. Y minus 25.3 will stay. If we distribute 2.5 in to both parts, we get 2.5x minus 2.5 times 2013 is 5032.5. Go ahead to get Y by itself, add 25.3. Now this is going to look like a really unique y-intercept, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. y equals 2.5x minus 5,007.2. So recognizing we're looking at the profits or the, the sales for Under Armour, and the years are 2013 and 2014. Because of that, the y-intercept would be when time was zero. So that would be an awfully long time ago. That would make our y-intercept pretty small. So now it's asking you to predict the sales for this year. This would be our last part here. In this year, it's 2020. So what we'll do to figure out the approximate sales is we'll substitute in 2020 for x. y equals 2.5 times 2020 minus 5,007.2. If we take 2.5 times 2020 and then subtract 5,007.2, we're going to get 42.8, and our label isn't just dollars, it's billions of dollars, so $48 billion. That would be the estimated sales for Under Armour this year. And that'll be the end of our notes for 2.1 Day 2. On Monday, we'll complete that last problem.